What's up, everybody? I got brand new stand up dates and I got brand new stand up material, baby. May 5th in Buffalo, second show. Got a few tickets left. May 6th, Ithaca, New York. May 7th, Albany sold out. May 28th, Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, we got the late show, got some tickets left. And then September 22nd in New York, sold out Radio City. September 23rd, theater at MSG is getting close to sold out. So if you want to be at that show and see me in New York City for the only time this year, you have to get the tickets now at chrisdcomedy.com, Hulu Theater, MSG. Also at chrisdcomedy.com, we got brand new merch up there. If you guys were at my Boston shows and you like that uh, Chrissy Chaos shirt with the Celtics logo, we got it up there right now. We got Saturdays are for the sweet shirts up there. Of course, Anxiety Tuesday shirts, which everybody loves. T-shirts, sweatshirts, everything you want. chrisdcomedy.com for everything. And patreon.com slash chrisdcomedy where all the magic happens. We are really putting a lot of love and energy into those episodes, so you We'll have a good time, baby. This is the new me. Welcome to the Chrissy Chaos Podcast, the guest that we've been saying we're going to have on <laughs> every episode for the past two months, and it never happened. What's finally here, Colin Quinn. Oh, my God. You still sound sick. No, I'm not sick anymore. You have long-term COVID. <laughs> I do have long-term COVID. Call the doctor. What's his face? Colin, uh, Lukash. <laughs> Colin already already upset because we don't have ice for his Diet Coke. Yeah. So Venetia is now going to have to go, get, going ice. To get ice. But what Venetia did do for you is we brought you tea and That's, cookies. That really is nice. Thank you. Well, what, what, nice. what would you like? We got organic peppermint tea or, or turmeric? Um, I like regular tea. But oh, Okay. So because the thing is with Venetia in here at this podcast, we're woke. So we have, uh, we, oh. we didn't get you, we, that's the thing with people, we get everything but the regular version, right? <laughs> Colin just wants regular Earl Grey tea. No, I hate Earl Grey tea. What kind of tea do we have for Colin? <laughs> this kind. Oh, uh, Colin walks around with his own tea. And it was breakfast. I walk around with tea just for occasions such as this. Tragedy is it going to happen. Yes. All right, so here, so we got your own tea. Yes. Are you happy to be here finally? I am happy. So far, is this is this is this better or uh, is this better or worse than um, uh, Norman's Norman and Sam's pod? It's it's worse. Why? Be why? Because the chairs are weird, and not comfortable. Right. We got to upgrade the studio. The space is too like empty, so it's creepy. But the location is the best. That's walking in this building. I was like, this is. New York, the way it doesn't exist anymore. As what do people say? Location, location, that's location. Right. So that's ba right. It's badass. That's the better. chairs are creepy. Yes. I'm going to put my feet on the suitcase. Well, now, well, now, well, now, well, now we have equipment. Venetia's friend who's going to start doing the studio. She's going to, uh, Venetia's friend's going to design the studio for a cool price of 15 grand. Whoa, <laughs> Venetia's gay friend's coming and doing it? That's great. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here, we got, you have your Diet Coke and, oh, and thank ice. you, Venetia. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I That's can't great. do a podcast without a Greek in the room. No, I um, don't blame you. So, so That's what Plato said. Is, did Plato say that? No. Now, do you think if Plato and Socrates were alive today, they'd have podcasts? Absolutely. And do you think it'd be a tragedy, a Greek tragedy? No, I don't think they weren't tragedians. They were the philosophers, you know. Right. No, I think it would be a big, I think it would be the whole thing. They were podcasts. They were the original podcast. People say it was a tough crowd. It was actually those guys. Well, this is... <laughs> And I want to ask you. Uh, yes. yeah, say, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> tough crowd. Um, how many people a day ask you to bring it back? Bring back what? Tough, bring tough it back. crowd. Oh, I think you mean like yeah, people ask me, like, hey, bring it back. Yeah. Guess uh, what? I'm bringing it back. Tough crowd with Chrissy D, produced by Tom Segura. You in? <laughs> um, all right. So here's we're gonna have a good day today. We're gonna do a quick, quick podcast, then we're going to yeah. breakfast. We always yeah. go to breakfast at the same place, and um, and and Colin always has the same order. Colin's got. The thing is with Colin is is you say that we're an old school New York place. Yeah. You're an old school New York soul, which we like about but you. But that's what I love about this building. I hate to keep belaboring the point. But when I walked up this block, I literally was going to say to Billy, like, how cool would it be to live in this? And then this is where the podcast is. That's it. It's great. You see? You see, I think there's something about my soul that you connect with. I something about Absolutely. That's it. First time I met you, I said, this guy's got that, new, that old New York, like, just as you... The, the, there's something like deeply like, okay, like accepting in the humor where you're like, I know how life's going to be. Right, yeah. right. Well, I think I am, I truly feel like I'm a guy that I think as I've gotten you know older a little bit, all I want 
is to have a career that keeps me in New York. Like if you said, hey, you're not going on the road anymore, but you'd be able to sustain your way of life and not leave New York, I would be happy with that. That's how my father was. My father did not leave. You right. ready for this? My father did not leave the state of New York or New Jersey till he was 71 years old. That was the first time he left New York and New Jersey, which I know that's a little crazy, but I a lot of people know, are like that. Even the Department of Corrections? Yeah, never it was all New York. Oh. He didn't go, even if he went upstate, it was all New York. He did not leave New York, New Jersey border. Got it. Yeah, he, he came to California for the first time to, uh, with me when I was out there in 2016. He came and he said uh, that he thought the sun was different out there. He goes, yeah. you got a different son. He's out there. right. It's true, but he thought, I think he thought there were two sons. He's probably correct. Who knows his one son? Yeah, we should take everyone's word for it. Yeah, I don't believe everything Neil deGrasse Tyson says. Hey, man, the moon landing. Hey, fuck that. Um. Now, let me ask you a question. <laughs> let me ask you a question. What do you think of... What do you think of um, Transgender spokesperson Dylan Mulvaney, no relation, to, no relation to John Mulaney, sponsoring Nike and Bud Light. <laughs> what do you think of that? Does A, does it make you want to buy a pair of Nikes? And B, does it make you want to break your sobriety at 30 plus years and have a sip of Bud Light? Because if you don't have a sip of Bud Light, you're not supporting trans rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. What do you think? Do you care about this stuff? Do you think it's a big deal? No, I don't. We don't care either, no. right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, I, first of all, she is a com. She's a comic. So by what? the way, yeah, that supposedly. So that's so. Dylan Mulvaney's a comic. Yeah. So uh, you know, Berkowitz is already downgrading my venues to well, make room yes. for Mulvaney. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be. You're gonna be opening for her pretty soon. Yeah. You ever been to Australia? I haven't. Do you, you want to go? Kind of. Yeah. Do you want to go with me? I don't know. I. I mean, the problem is like, oh, even though I know it's that opening, I always feel like. Your crowd or anybody's crowd is their crowd. Right. And let's be honest. My act, it's not for a big, giant room. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, well, you know. I'm not a comedian for excited people. Yeah. Like, you know, people pump music before a comedy show. Like, let's make, get them going. That's not my crowd. No. That's not my act. No. My act is like, okay, let's calm down here. Right. You and listen. I mean? And listen. Yeah. It's yeah. really, it's like yeah. going... Joe DeRosa is stealing your whole vibe. It's like a nineteen thirty. It's like a nineteen thirties nun kind of doing <laughs> yeah, an act. That's yeah. really my act. But that DeRosa. But, wait, let's get back to that. DeRosa is stealing my vibe. Yeah, DeRosa. DeRosa now. DeRosa is doing only kind of one man shows. The New York guy. He's he's like, cool. He goes. He goes to me. He goes to me. I want to be the. I want to be the one man show New York guy. That, that that there's there's not many of those guys. That said, oh, you mean Colin Quinn? What? You mean Colin Quinn? Oh my God! DeRosa's and he literally called me and said, "Hey, I'm doing this one man show." And I was like talking to him. Yeah, it's cool. And he goes, yeah. "Hey, thanks, man." Yeah. So basically, he's saying, yeah. "Yeah, Colin signed off. Now let's get rid of him." Yeah, he's calling it Story of New York instead of New York Story. Oh my God! <laughs> First of all, the audacity. He thinks he's gonna be New York. He's from Philly. From Philly. He doesn't even know where he's from. He's adopted. <laughs> <laughs> no. I Colin don't. Quinn, by the way, Colin Quinn's yeah. small talk, um, which is, is it, the run is over. But No, uh, it's on. Oh, it's on. I thought it's just March 30th to May 6th. It does say that. What the fuck? So oh, that's, that's right, right. We're in April. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's on. Colin Quinn's small. Sorry. I got my dates mixed up. I'm, I'm already in Australia. Uh, Colin Quinn. March 30th to May 6th, Colin Quinn Small Talk. I saw it. It was, I think, his best one, even though I love New York Story. It was the best one, and it was a lot of pressure for me to watch that show because behind me, directly behind me, <laughs> was the one and only Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. And we were the show was an hour. I was laughing my balls off, but there was one part of the show about 40 minutes in. Okay, think about how crazy this is. 40 minutes in. I'm, we all had to wear masks. I don't know if it was Collins rules, New York rules. I don't know. The, no, it was that theater's rules. Theater's rules. So we all had to wear masks. Do you still have to wear masks? In the no. Just, okay, good. Masks are off, so now my fans will come. So, <laughs> so now, you, now you'll get the NYPD just said, we're walking it. So, <laughs> so, so what happened was, it's 40 minutes into this performance, having so much fun. Like anything else, like people, like I'm a you know, stupid millennial. I, my brain zones out and I'm trying to think of ways to look at my phone because it doesn't matter who I'm watching, even if I'm having a great time. Of course. You can't, I have ADHD. So I'm 40 minutes in. Yeah. Colin does a great bit that I didn't laugh at. And it's not that I didn't think it was funny. I just wasn't yeah. paying attention. I right. was zoned out. And all of a sudden, I get a tap on the shoulder and Jerry goes, I guess you didn't like that one. 
and then zooms back. And I was oh, like, oh, I love it. shit. So I felt like a, like a student where the teacher's looking at you like, hey, asshole, you paying attention? Yeah. And then I laughed as hard as I could for the next 20 minutes. Yeah. It yeah. Was, that's great. Yeah. So but, um, yeah. Jerry, he, Jerry he, he, and then Jerry signed the best thing. This is, you know, did, do you hear what happened with, with, with List? And all that, do we tell you about Joe List and that? Yeah, I tell oh, it again. Oh, totally. Okay. So if you hadn't heard. <laughs> it's the greatest. So, so we're at, we're at, we're at watching. The Colin, after party. At the after. No, 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 no. No, not the after party. Before your show. Oh. This is, we're at Colin Quinn Small Talk, which you can get right now. ColinQuinn.com tickets? Where do they yeah, get? sure. Whatever. Um, Colin, yeah, you can use the pay phone, call up, and see if, see if there's <laughs> tickets left. So it's me, Mike Cannon, the great Joe List, the great Sarah Tolomash, a bunch of other comics, right? We're all standing there in a circle, just Mateo Lane. We're all admiring Mateo's abs. And we're talking and we're having fun. And all of a sudden, you know, that we're about to go, go to our seats and Jerry Seinfeld walks past, right? Alone. And he, he walks up, so it's a bunch of comedians, but he walks up to me. He goes, Christopher, keep up the good work. And I was like, okay, shook. And I shook, and he shook my hand, right? So now- you know, comics go nuts. Jerry Seinfeld. Joe List goes, let me smell your hand. And then takes the palm in and goes like this. <sighs> like that, right? By the way, Joe List, the biggest Jerry Seinfeld fan. Uh, one of the biggest Jerry Seinfeld fans of all time. Jerry, he didn't really, he thought Jerry went down the stairs. Jerry would turned around and looked and was looking right at us. And he, <laughs> we turn around and literally as Joe's turning, he still has my hand, my <laughs> palm of my hand on his nose. And Jerry just went, ugh. And then walked down the stairs. And then Joe List fell to his knees. He was like, I blew it. I blew it. I was like, Joe, it was never going to happen anyway. But yes, you did no, blow it. No, it was never going to happen. But no. it, it, was, it, it was one of the funniest moments. And then I will say, on a positive streak, I've gotten now multiple texts back from uh, Jerry Seinfeld. And we did receive a message from Ross from the 1975, my favorite band. Because I was on a cold streak. I was not getting texts back from anybody who right. I admired. Because I over text. And then, because Jasmine's like, you text these people too much. You got to be cool. Jasmine's like, do I ever text you back? I was like, yeah. no. She was like, that's all by design. That makes people want you. She was oh, like, she was like, of she's course, smart. She was that's like, good. I'm not going to text you back. She was like, you don't, know what it, you don't know how it is to have a pussy. You need to start acting like you have a pussy, which is good advice. That's good. That's very good advice. <laughs> Act like you have a pussy. Yes. With Colin Quinn, small talk. Yeah. Um, now, are you excited about... Are you excited about our breakfast? And are we going to go for a walk after our breakfast? No, there'll be no walk for me. Why not? Ah, I don't know. I got a lot of stuff to do. What are you going to do? Plenty. What if... I'm being like Jasmine. I like... Ah, you're acting like you have a pussy. I like it. (laughs) Now, let me ask you. Were you going to go to the Mets game today with Billy and I? Or you were going to... at the I told Billy, no way. What's the reason? Because I hate doing things like that. I mean, I hate even all the sports I love. I hate watching them for more than two innings or half an inning. Even if I go to the track, I stay for three races and I go, I got to get out of here. I think I must have some kind of ADD or something because I can't folk. I can't. I go jump out of my skin when I'm involved in anything. Is this Except for comedy shows I can watch. You can watch. You could sit at another comic show and watch it. Like an hour. But even that's an hour. Baseball games three hours. Too long. Too long. Comedy. By we go the to the way. track every year. My family, you know, yeah. we go to we all meet and go to Savage Hall. You no, know you're Irish from Brooklyn. And That's everybody sits there, but even there, at least you can walk away. But I go crazy. I want. I always leave before the the last three races. Yeah. Do you? And 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 by the way, I've been to two uh, races. Two. Ch- tracks that I remember in my own in, in my life because my dad used to gamble on the horses and my and I told you he would tell my mom that he was taking me to he would tell me to tell my mom that we went to the zoo but we really went <laughs> to the so horse, funny. Store, but we really were going to aqueduct racetrack yeah and so so I think because of that and because then you know once the gambling stopped and all that my dad was like no more horse races don't yeah. don't ever go there and uh and I was like okay so I never really went but now that I'm older set my ways I'd like to start going to some horse races. I think it'd be cool for me and my kids to see, but not gamble on them. Just watch. Well, you're going to get bored. You're going to have to gamble on them. You have to come gamble. Come to Saratoga this year. You go, you're going? My family's going. Maybe you didn't hear what I said eight seconds ago. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're I, a bad host. You don't listen to people. You no, just I do. No, because you didn't specify. You didn't specify. <laughs> you didn't specify where it was. I thought you were going to Belmont. You didn't What's say that? Saratoga. Oh, yeah, I did. You said Saratoga? Pull it back. <laughs> um, <laughs> doesn't matter. So I've never been to Saratoga Springs. No, you're not it's, very nice. it's a family thing, really. So it would be weird if I brought you. Not that Why you not? Were, 
Because it's my family. Like you can't just show up with other people. Show up in my, well, I'll, me, I'll, I'll, have two, I'll have two fucking We have plenty bands. of Puerto Ricans in our family. Um, How many Puerto I, I, I Ricans? Well, we have Puerto black Rican. and we have Mexican. We really don't have Puerto Rican. Black plus Mexican equals Puerto Rican. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, and, what do you think about this? Dad got blasted for marrying a woman who looks exactly like his daughter. If oh, like yeah, kids, look at that. What do you think? Um, I don't think that's an issue. She's a blonde girl. She's a white girl with blonde hair and a tan. That's what everybody looks like. Every man and woman in America. I don't know which like one's the daughter and which one's that. You're right. Everybody does look like everybody that. Everybody looks like this. You know. Yes, and everybody looks like that dad too. Exactly. Yeah, that dad. That dad. Is looks, that Luis Gomez? I was going to say it looks like the Puerto Rican rattlesnake. That yeah. Guy. That guy, that guy, uh, yeah. So I, I don't really care about this. I would absolutely marry a woman. By the way, you, you marry a woman who looks like your daughter if you have kids. Do you, who do you think your wife looks like? Your daughter. Well, that's a good point, too. It doesn't make any sense. It's and just they really don't it. look that similar. Right. That's the thing. It's like Although I can't tell which one's the mother, which is I the daughter. I don't know which one is the mother, which one's uh, the daughter either. But, it, uh, but I'm not interested in either one. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm not interested in either one because... Uh, they don't, white women don't do it for me. They if don't. They, if that was Latina, if that yeah. woman had his tattoos, I'd be all over it. Oh, the little Latina yeah. flair. Oh, yeah. That's that. I think there's something about New York white guys where we are yeah. just like a gravitational pull, all of us, towards Puerto Rican women. And some people can fight it, some people can't, because you were the same as me. Probably the first crushes you had were Puerto Rican girls. Oh, my Let's God. Be I, yeah, I know. Of course, I knew some great Puerto Rican girls back. Actually, but that was later when I was actually having sex. But before I had sex, I was in love with this girl. I'll tell you right now. I've never, I've never said this anywhere. Alicia Silva. I Whoa. was in love with her. She was on Bond Street. Alicia Silva. White girl? Puerto, a Puerto Rican. Because Puerto Rican. We're talking Puerto Rican. I know. But, my but, you, but Alicia Silva doesn't sound Puerto Rican. Oh, Alicia Silva. Silva, Silva. Silva. I thought you said Silver, like Alicia Silver. No, no, Silva. Oh, Silva. Oh, my God, I was in love with her. Alicia Silva. And I what mean, happened? Did you make a move? No, I tried to make a move. I tried to go out with her once, and she was just blew it off. And then there was this other girl. I, I used to, there was another girl who was a hair Puerto Rican, lived out, and I can't remember her name, but she lived out in East New York. This is in the 70s. I got off the train in Pennsylvania, Livonia. That's not good. A white guy in like 1975. They thought I was a mar mirage. That's why nothing happened to me. I walked eight blocks. These guys are like, this has to be like a optical illusion. <laughs> and that's the only reason nothing happened. I just strutted around, walked the afternoon with her. Nothing happened. So See, Livonia Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue, that's how you know is it because it, it's still like that. Yeah. It's not gentrified. No. It's still, you, you would not, only the people that live there will go there. Are you, and once you're there, you have to commit. You just have to walk through the hood. It helped that I smoked in those days. When you smoke cigarettes, you look like you don't care. Right. That's why French girls look so cool when they smoke. It's like, they I don't, don't care. You don't care. Well, French people in general don't care. You know, I heard that in France, you can have an affair with your on your wife or husband, and as long as you don't fall in love with the other person, they're not going to get that mad and not going to get divorced. Do you believe it? That used to be the way it was. Okay. But that was also the okay. 70s. In the 70s, people got away with m bloody murder. Right. Everybody was like, hey, every marriage was an open marriage. To a degree, you know, like all the year, people in their 20s and the 70s, everybody's like, hey, man, you got to do what's right. It was all just lies so you could bang anybody you wanted to. Right. But right, it was a, the pretty, open marriage concept, was a pretty good move. It never works, though, right? It worked from 65. You ever see a movie called Carnal Knowledge? They had all these movies that were kind of like brutally honest from those days, Jack Nicholson. But it was all about this kind of thing. You know, right. it was crazy. Um, yeah, it never works. And I guarantee in France, I guarantee there's a lot of drama. A lot of drama, right? I, I don't. But mean, they did do it. That was their thing. That was the thing. Well, does it get to a point? Does it get to a point too when you get older where you just don't even care about that stuff anymore? Because my dad said, my dad said, here's the problem with being a guy. Yeah. His, his, yeah. He said, he said, you know, I'm 75 right now, right? He goes, but my brain still thinks I'm 25. He goes, so I'll see a hot girl walk into a deli, and my brain will say. Oh, I'd like to hook up with that girl. <laughs> yeah. But then I look in the mirror and I realize, well, I have this body and I don't have a working penis. So I can't hook up with that girl right. if I wanted to. Right. He like, goes, where you are still young, right. so your brain will say what my brain says, but you then start to think, oh, maybe I can. And then it causes a lot of problems. He, so, so he said, his advice was- It's like a Cat Stevens song. He said, hold on for as long as you can. He told me, <laughs> hold on for as long as you can in relationships because eventually, eventually your penis is not going to work and then it's fine. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. We talk about them each and every week. BetterHelp, 
all of us have to get our mental health in check. We all, it is an active lifelong process that we're all doing together. BetterHelp is awesome. What I love about BetterHelp is it's all done online. So you can just match up with a therapist that's right for you. Take a brief questionnaire. They know who to match you up with. And then if you don't like that person, you can change them at any time. Nobody has to know but you. BetterHelp.com. I'm telling you, if you benefit from therapy, which I have, I can't, I can't advocate for this service enough better help if you you have to talk we all need people to talk to better help are those people all you got to do right now is go to better help that's h-e-l-p dot com slash chaos today to get 10 percent off your first month that's better h-e-l-p dot com slash chaos get 10 percent off your first month go get your mental health in check it's v importante Gentlemen, if you didn't know already, it is tax season here in the United States of America, and you know what that means. It means that Manscaped is here to make sure your paperwork is done and your boys downstairs are having fun. Yeah! Make sure you spend your tax return money on the important things this year, like family, friends, and ball deodorant. Join the 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code chaos, okay? That ball deodorant is the best. They also got the brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer. Um, It's all cordless, skin-safe technology. They got the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. They got everything you want. The start of spring also marks the start of Testicular Cancer Awareness Month in April. Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Thank you, Manscaped. Right now, 20% off plus free shipping with the code CHAOS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code CHAOS at manscaped.com. Don't just get your money back this year. Get your swagger back, too, with Manscaped. Well, I'm 38. I feel like I'm getting older, but you think I'm not. No, I think, to me, you're very young. What were you doing at 38? Were you on SNL already? Uh, Yeah. Wow. See, I'm not on SNL. So what? Doesn't matter. (laughs) Nowadays, that means nothing compared to what you're doing. If you're on SNL now or being successful the way you are right now, you're doing, you're the, this is the SNL of Yeah, but it still hurts to not even have ever be a New York comic and a New York guy. And my whole existence is New York and not even get an audition. I never even got a sniff from SNL. But here's what bothers me. First of all, how about me? I didn't ever on Law and Order. That's true. That's worse. That's worse. And, but that's also the way that, where you always get pissed off at these things. You know what I mean? You always focus on that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Look at how much weight Colin's lost. Colin looks great. Oh my God. These are the phases of Colin Quinn. God, I'm so sick. Look at my picture in the corner though. I was like. (laughs) Ripped. Oh my God. I was a savage. Look at that. You were a maniac. I was a real savage. Probably had a size 28 waist back then. Yeah. 28 waist. I I love it. I wasn't even lifting that much. That was the beauty of it. That was what were you twenty six? That was there? mostly Marlboros and speed. Was that was like tw- no? I was nineteen. Yeah, we should let's let's tweet this at Alicia Silva and see what she thinks. Yeah, I would love to know how Colin lost his virginity. That's how did I question. lose it? Yeah, well, tell us. Well, I mean, it's it's uh, you know in phases, but really, I lost what? my. I lost my virginity the first. <laughs> How do you lose it in phases? <laughs> right in the back. Billy Hayes. Billy Hayes, uh, the great Billy Hayes is off camera yelling the front and the back. Yeah. Billy Hayes, who's got yeah. not a tooth in his head. He's trying, he's, he's trying to imply that I lost my virginity. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to imply that I'm... But, um, I was the recipient of losing my virginity. Right. <laughs> but no, I lost my virginity. Actually, we, I used to work as an assistant, like on a, on the truck. Like well, we deliver the, it's a long story. But anyway, but we get, this we is got, what a podcast is for. Basically it was okay. <laughs> fair so enough. You were a trucker. You were a trucker. Fair enough. What's but tell anyway, us the story. Okay. So the story was in our neighborhood, we had these, they started selling bulk animal, uh, cat food and dog food. So we'd go around to this place on, Driving to Manhattan, my friends were the drivers. I was 15, 16, so I couldn't drive yet. And I was the, just lug up the packages. And we not only deliver bulk cat and dog food to these supply houses, we deliver it to every cat. I knew every cat lady in Manhattan. And in those days, New York was dangerous. So all these cat ladies had these beautiful apartments. All the neighbors, like the Upper West Side, were kind of half grimy. So you'd walk in these old buildings, but, but these... Apartments are worth um, millions of dollars today. So I'd walk up. Benetia like grew flights. up in one of them. 
What's that? In the Upper West Side. Venetia grew up in one of them. There you go. Up West Side, they had a... So I'd be walking up with all these cat food, and you'd walk into these apartments, and I thought nothing strange about it. You know, when you're 15, 16, and like 30 cats would be surrounding me, and they were like hoarders, but you wouldn't think of hoarders in those days. All over... But these are such expensive places. And these old ladies were like, thank you. I'd give you like a 10-cent tip. And like 19... You're like, what the hell? That's nothing, you know? And I thank you. And all over the place. So, um... But anyway, that has nothing to do with the fact that after work, we'd go, we'd get it, we'd start the day, whoever was driving, we start the day, get a six pack, driving across the Brooklyn Bridge, drinking. Then we get a bag of weed. Uh, I was smoking a cigarette. And then was it, it Bud Light? And then, <laughs> yes. To support trans then, activists yeah. Dylan Mulvaney? <laughs> I don't think they had Bud Light in those days. Okay, but if they did, that's what Colin would have drank. I just want to, we support the that's trans right. community. And, um, and, um, and then, so we used to go once a week, a little treat. We'd take money out of the bus. They, it was all cash. And I remember saying to my friend, like, my, the guy who was a friend of mine, and I go, but an older guy, I go, aren't they going to notice that we're taking cash for our weed, our beer, our food? We go to this place, this pizza place, in Little Italy that was famous back then. I think it was, I forget, it was Sal's or one of those. And then get, have sex with hookers. Because the whole city was crawling with hookers. It was like taxi driver days. Right. Do you ever see taxi driver when there's prostitution all around the street? Yeah. That's 14th and 3rd Avenue. That was one of the spots. I'll tell you all the hooker spots from those days. Tell them. 14th and 3rd. Okay. 28th and Lex. 28th. To like 33rd and Lex. Okay. Um, to eighth, I mean, 10th Avenue, 8th Avenue, all those places. But that's those were for hack. Those Which were for is, tourists. Ev- by the way, every place he's just listed, <laughs> I am visualizing it. Every place on that corner right now is now in urgent care. It used <laughs> to be hookers, and now it's in urgent care. Yeah. <laughs> um, shoot, I can't. Well, Park Avenue in the 30s was also a hookup place. Park Avenue in the 30s? In the 30s. They wow. have these big buildings. They'd be under... The, the the entrance of the big building, you see them in the shadow, you see the pimps, and all the pimps would be hanging out in the corner together. Anyway, that's how I lost my virginity, one of those. Uh, to a hooker? What? Yeah. You lost your virginity to a hooker? Yeah. How oh much? Oh, my God. Much? What's that? How much it run? I have no idea. But we'd take the money out of the bag, we'd use the money of the bosses, and then i go to my friend, i go, aren't they going to notice? And he goes, because he was a real smart Italian, right. they always know this kind of thing, he goes, they're too busy robbing each other. They're never going to notice that we're robbing them. And I was like, <laughs> and it was, it was true. True. He knows. <laughs> they never noticed. Now, because because we hear that, I think, right? We hear that, and I personally think, and I know what comes to it, but I personally think, man, I would want to see that New York. But do you think that New York was no was was not good? Yeah, I mean, or do you miss that New York? Of course. I miss it in the rearview mirror. But at the time, everybody who's from that New York, from Billy tell you, like, even though the trains are horrible today, they're nothing compared to those days. Because now, trains are horrible because you have a homeless psycho. In those days, an entire gang would walk through the train. <laughs> yeah. You can you can fight a homeless guy. Right. You know what you I mean? You can't fight it. You so, can't fight 30 guys. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you think then, because there's a lot of talk, especially as, as us, our generation, yes. we're like, oh, because we remember, we grew up, like what my father says, he goes, you grew up in New York peacetime. Because right. I grew up in New York wartime. That's right. He's like, so his opinion is, you, like you, he's like, you don't know what New York was like when it was a war zone. You call New York a war zone now, it's not that. Right. He's like, so he's like, I do think that you grew up in a time where New York was the best it's ever been. He's like, and it's not that anymore. I'll give you that. It's right. not what it was 10 right. years ago. He was like, but I do think New York will come back to its glory years, but it's going to take a long time. Do you, do you agree or do you, what do you think? Yeah, it'll take no time. I think it'll be fast. <laughs> But I mean, um, but it's but not there it'll yet. never be like that. What the seventies had was also a flavor to it. So even though it was really dangerous and really weird, I do look back, and obviously it's easy to have rose colored glasses. But like there I was do just rose colored glasses. Shout out Anthony Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's lost uh, like that, uh, that. Like, what was the craziest thing you witnessed in old New York? Uh, I mean, it was, it was constant. It was just, I mean, I'm constant. Like we would be driving the streets and like that. That's why the movie taxi driver was so brilliant. Cause you'd be driving the streets and you just see all these like incidents happening, like in taxi driver, 
just constant fire. Like if you went to the Bowery, the, you ever see those, like the bums would just come up, squeegee, they'd be hitting each other in the street, throwing bottles at each other. Then you go by Oh, they time. didn't have a John Varvato's jean store in the Bowery when you were growing <laughs> up? Oh. <laughs> and, they, and then you'd pass CBGB's, and it'd be all these punk rockers for the first time. And then down Third Street, there's the Hell's Angels. Then you'd be like Times Square, and you'd see pimps fighting in the streets with knives going after each other. And the cops wouldn't come running up like an emergency. They'd just come strolling up like, hey, like giving them an extra second to try to stab each other because everybody right. was so casual about it. Was, it's like a hockey referee. They're letting them fight a little bit. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it's, every so, day was something. You so, know? So, and, and so you think that even when our glory years of New York, I think were like 2008 to right before the pandemic, it right. was, you, that wasn't your glory years in New York. You, didn't, you like your New York better. No, because you're young. You like whenever you were young. That's what I was, yeah. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? That, like, that's, and at the time, believe me, I used to be like, oh, I hate this city. I wish I could live in Valley Stream. My dream was to live in Valley Stream. Oh, God. <laughs> Valley Stream? So you could go to Umberto's Pizza? <laughs> my dream was Valley Stream. <laughs> Valley Stream? Well, because my cousins lived out there when I was at like eight, and we went out there one day, and it was so quiet. Right. I was right. like, oh, my God. This but, is but here's the thing, though. I'm somebody you know living on Staten Island now, and I'm having a lot of trouble adjusting to the quiet and the suburbs, and all I want to do is come back to New York. You're a guy who even maybe you wanted to go to Valley Stream, you actually... Never left New York, right? You've always lived in one of the five boroughs. No, I lived in California for a few years, too. How long? In the, in the early 90s. Uh, but, okay. How long? Like three years, four years. All right, fine, three, four years. But other than that, you lived in... Why do you have to contextual... I live in Staten Island. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. When? South Beach, Sand Lane. Oh, you did tell me that. <laughs> Father Capadano. <laughs> but did you... But, but the majority of your life, you lived in Manhattan. Yeah. And, and, and why is that? What's the reason? You know how there's just something intangible. We were just talking about that. There's something about the boroughs. There's something about New York that's just I don't know. It's the people, maybe I don't know. Because what it Staten is. Island, it is one of the five boroughs, and I do love it. But I, I'm having a very tough time adjusting. Like I want to sell my house and come to the city. Yeah, I just want to do it. But do Jazz it. is like, but we got kids, we got a backyard, you got a pool. Like, what do you do? You want to put them in a student in, in an apartment? I'm like, yes. I think we'd be closer together, and the kids would have a the city vibe. No, you, I'll tell you, you move incrementally, move to like Bensonhurst, and be one of those Italians who used to have the backyard. Even where I used to live, we had a neighbor, Lippy. Old Italian guy. You think uh, Lippy? Lippy. It was his nickname, but he was a. He would a, just sit there. He was an old mob guy. He was a low-level mob guy, and his backyard, he had chickens, roosters. He had all kinds of little animals back there, <laughs> and tomato plants. It was like a petting zoo. Yeah, well, and tomato plants. Yeah, that's like my dad's friend. I brought him up for Bobby Pets. Did I tell you about Bobby <laughs> no. Pets? Bobby oh. Pets was a guy that lived in, in, around my dad. You know, and I, I was I was a little kid. He with Bobby Pets loved animals. He was like your guy loved yeah. animals. Right. That was his thing. And he had in his basement. I, he would have all different types of exotic animals. And one day, my it was hot, hot summer day. And I remember my father would take me back to his old neighborhood, whatever. And, you know, I would hang out with his friends. It was, that was fun for me. You know, we'd go to the Bronx, yeah. whatever. And my dad had, uh, and he was like, oh, this is Bob, you know, Bobby Pets is around. Supposedly he got a new pet. He had gotten an, uh, an Antarctic emperor penguin in, bro in, in, in oh one of the five boroughs. hilarious. He had got an emperor penguin, and he had no, obviously, instructions. He had just had connects uh, to get these things uh, illegally. Uh, uh, and he fucking uh, had this penguin, and he uh, had all the kids come around, and we had it on, you know, no pictures back then. You know, nobody right. cared, But he was all on a leash walking around, and he was like, oh, and he had, gave oh. us all, I swear to God, little slices of craft cheese that he bought at the supermarket and said, just give it to cheese. And I remember as a little kid thinking, there's no way that that's a part of its natural diet. There's no way it can no digest way. lactose. So he was like, don't worry, that's what he feeds all the animals. And then, tr swear to God, I was, remember thinking, like, there's no way this thing's going to make it. It died, like, four days later because of he also had it, it in his basement apartment with a fucking frigid air bullshit air conditioner. Oh, he didn't, my God. He didn't mimic, like, <laughs> Antarctic conditions for it. But that's a neighborhood guy who was fun, who was free. Right. Who we love, but today he'd be on TikTok as an animal abuser. Well, yeah, because not well, only he was, was. He, an he was an animal killer. <laughs> he was worse than him. He was an animal killer, and people... Instead of realizing this guy's torturing animals, they're like Bobby Pets. Yeah, yeah, this guy. Everybody loves him. And uh, you know what? I, you know what I miss too. You know what I miss. And and again, I think I might be romanticizing my childhood, but I miss when I would walk from my mother's house up the block to if she'd ask me to go to the deli for her or whatever. You know, right on the corners of the deli, I would walk past in the summertime, which every neighborhood had the four old ladies sitting out there on folded chairs 
talking shit, commenting, t- reminding yeah. me to be nice to my mother, you know, telling me what sure. a sweet little boy I was, giving me money to go get them something, keeping something right. for myself, getting That's ice cream. Right. And I lose that in Staten Island. They're great. I'm surrounded by great people. Yes. But I'm, oh, here we go. But I'm, lo- but I'm losing, I've lost that sense of which I want my kids to have, that sense of community, which I'm realizing now is more important than the size of your house, is the people around you. Everything's about community, which you just can't have in the suburbs. You can only have it that in one in the city. Yeah, but you don't have it. I love the fact you have, like, the sense of community is going to move to Tribeca, where, like, the kids are, you know... Basically, in private, like you're living next to Taylor Swift, the sense of community. Yeah, I want my kids There's to be no friends sense with the of community Trumps. these days. There's not even any stoops in Tribeca. All right, so I'll go over to Brooklyn, maybe. Maybe I'll move back to Bay Ridge. Maybe that's the happy medium. Bay Ridge? Yeah. Yeah, I think I should go to Bay Ridge. Or maybe I'll just go to fucking Tribeca. Fuck it. I want to live in the same building as Trevor Noah. <laughs> <laughs> the sense of community in some playroom. With like 18 nannies. Well, what do you think? Oh. Well, what do you... <laughs> Sense of community. There it is. What do you, what do you think? What do you think? Well, there, uh, would, there would definitely be more small talk in the city than out in Staten that's Island. That's the thing, too. But Thanks. See, Lavish trying to connect you to my show, you selfish bastard. <laughs> <laughs> City for an hour, you mentioned the show once and told me it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you told people don't bother coming to see the show. It's down. <laughs> no, it's down for the count. Sorry, you son of a bitch. Sorry, supposed to be a professional. I know. That's why, I like <laughs> Mark, Mark and Sam, those guys know how to run a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> they chose pizza. <laughs> we got you cookies and tea. I know. I like that. That Thank is you. nice. Yeah, Venetia. She was like, "This Colin gonna like this?" I looked at. It, I said, "Nope." Well, I do like that. See, why don't you want to eat it? Are you fasting? I don't know. Let's talk I'm about waiting it. for a meal. All right. What if we miss? What if this podcast goes too long and we miss the breakfast window? There's no breakfast window over there. They always have breakfast. We're gonna walk there, I by the know. way. Oh, only okay. five blocks away. That'll be the walk then. That'll be the walk. That'll be that walk you probably you wanted. <laughs> one so of the best badly. days of one of the best one of the best days I had last year is me, Colin, and 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 Billy Hayes eating and then taking a walk by the water. And I've asked Colin multiple times to do it, and every time he says no. Him and his stupid sense of community. Now the walk. He's in a state of melancholia, and it's ridiculous. It's not our fault you're flying around the co- country making goddamn, uh, doing gigs. I know. You're, oh. you're imagining a, a place that doesn't exist. I am. There's more of a sense of community and more old ladies on chairs in Staten Island than any other borough in the city. <laughs> yeah. That's reality. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to find them. I can't find them. Exactly. They're not in your neighborhood. You're on, you're, I'm on you're the top of there. a fucking hill. You're like Michael Corleone. You're up there with your goddamn it. <laughs> 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 I did want to ask Colin though, with the introduction of AI and everyone being artificial on a device, intelligence, do you think small talk's going to die, or it's a golden age of new? Thank small you. Talk? I, d- I I address this in the show, homeless, which is basically Chat GPT and all these things have dropped homeless uh, have dropped uh, small talk down eighty seven percent. See, I can't even remember the name of my goddamn show. Thanks to you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You don't and have you to wear so anymore. Weird? By the way, this is an interesting story. You might want to talk about it in some episode. In Holland, this episode. In Holland, well, you have to get that. You have to. In Holland, <laughs> they have small talk now. Self checkout. They have small talk for the old people, where they have computerized small AI small talk wow. at the registers in Holland. Wow, Holland, the Dutch. We had Russell Shorto on, who wrote this great book, Journey uh, Island in the Center of the World, oh. which is about the colonial Dutch period. I know of New York. Do you know about? The I read Dutch? part of it. What do you have to say Famous about it? Famous story. I read part of it. What do you have to say about it? It was good. What do you think of it? It's really good. <laughs> Why uh, you don't like him? No, he was great. He was he was sitting right in that chair. Oh. And uh, he came on and it was, he was a great episode. uncomfortable too. I know. He was. <laughs> well, I know. He wore a suit. He thought it was going to be a, a little bit more upscale than it was. He no, was like, oh. It's really, yeah. well, but I think it's pretty, it's pretty upscale. But it's just a little too spare for my liking. But this is what it is now. It's, it's kind of less is more. This whole kind of, mo- you know, we have a motif going on where it's like, look, you know, we I disagree. Like All the Airbnbs, they have bookshelves. They have a certain style. Don't you want to be comfortable? Yeah, but on camera, it looks good. We got a plant. The other one that wants to be... <laughs> You, you, you claim to be one of these guys that wants to go back to the old days, sense of community, and you got to fuck it. We might as well be in like a psychiatrist's office in 1985 in Manhattan. I know. So you think make I should- Make this like a neighborhood. Vanity, tell old, your girl to make it like a neighborhood. You know what you do? <clears throat> or oh, just have a good idea. You make four like art, this is the place you can get it done, many old ladies in beach chairs on like a table sitting behind you. 
She's writing it down. Love that. I'm kidding. It's a bad idea, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we should make. I, I no, I do think it's a good idea to have this be like the old school Brooklyn hangout. That's what it is. Yes, as long as it's not like a stoop, because sometimes that looks too sesame. Street. Yeah, doing it, doing it, doing it from uh, the sunroom in my house in Staten Island wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, nobody wanted to come out there. Uh, well, you wouldn't. You don't even want to come out there. Which no. would have been nice. You could have met the four old ladies. You know, that's in my neighborhood. <laughs> I guarantee, right down the block, down by the pizza, what's the name of that street? Is that by Highland? Yeah. Not Highland. Um, um, uh, not Father Capadano. Father Capadano, Highland. Those are the Amboy Road. What's the other one? Victory Boulevard. Yeah, Victory, Victory Boulevard. I guarantee there's old ladies all over that place. It's probably the last place on the planet where those old ladies you talk about live. No, there's actually a Metropolitan small- Metropolitan Avenue is a bunch of hipster comedians right now. Yes, yes, but but there is one little small two-block radius where there's this place called Anthony and Son Panini Shop, which I said I wanted to go. We went there. Um, um, they, it's a great, great place. New York Nico was there with us. We sat and had sandwiches outside, sitting in folding chairs, and I genuinely felt like I was in a time machine that went back to 1998. Wow. We got to go. Great sandwiches. That's a good feeling. Great. You got good Diet Cokes. They have cups of ice, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so what do you think? Do you think that, first of all, Pimps had this up for a while. I just want to ask you about this. Oh this is God. the first person with Down syndrome to ever be charged with murder. That's very uh, uplifting and inspiring. What do you think about it? I think it's great that they're finally inclu- inclusive enough in the uh, Chicago <laughs> gang <laughs> yes. to bring people with Down syndrome into the gang. Right. I, I, I appreciate you saying that. You now, know? this kid, yeah, because this kid, I mean, I'm sure he has a TikTok. He'd be fucking huge if he had TikTok. Down yeah. syndrome murderer? I agree. I used to work with uh, Down syndrome people. So did I. You did? What did you do with them? I, was, I, went, I worked at a camp for all Down syndrome people. Okay. And, what did uh, you do? You know, just kind of played with them. You know, like, not played with them, but, I mean, you know, I just led them around and tried to make them do, like, scenes and, like, stuff. And just Oh, you were doing, like, like uh, acting with them? Yeah. Nice. Oh, it was funny. There were some great ones, too. Yeah. I mean, there was some, there was a couple that were strong as oxes. And there's one guy who was like, well, he had a guitar, and he just started playing. But he would be playing these tunes, and you almost like, that's so close to beautiful. It's unbelievable. Right. I knew a kid when I was a pediatric physical therapist. I worked with a lot of Down syndrome kids, and there was this one girl. You know, she's a she's a bigger girl. Sometimes Down syndrome kids, you know, they they yeah. part of the diagnosis they have a little bit more weight on them. But she, at like maybe nine years old, was already like like one degree under a black belt in jujitsu. So the problem was with her is if she got out of line, you know, the other kids like you know we would teach us especially if they start to have like a like a you know go into a send like manic state. You know, yeah. you'd have to get them in like a hold, get them into a Not room. Her. Pat- Not her. She put you in a fucking arm bar. She- <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, I used to talk to Joyce her. Gracie. Jo- she was yeah. um yeah. And what she and you used to talk to her. About I used to what? talk to her and be like, you know, try to get her to calm down, try to tell her little jokes, whatever, rub her back, and then usually I could get her to calm down because she was Puerto Rican. I was like, I'm like the Puerto Rican whisperer from day one. Right. I know how to talk to the Puerto Rican girls, sure. no matter what the thing is. I can get you under my spell. Yeah. That's what it, it worked, is. huh? It well, yeah, it worked. Well, I got fired, but yeah, it worked. Why did you get fired? I got interfering with the staff. No, what happened was is now fired. I didn't get fired. What happened was is I was not asked to. Me leave. too. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I asked, no, because what happened was, is first of all, they yelled at me because I was the only male physical therapist. And the kids, we would play with the kids, and I would, you know, they thought it was fun. I would pick two kids up and run down the hallway like footballs right. with them. You know, it's touchdown, <laughs> and I'd spike them on a big beanbag, and it was great. And the principal was like... <laughs> <laughs> and the... I would do that all the time, and they would love it and be dying. Ah. Of course. And the prince was like, you can't do that. You cannot do that with these children. I was like, what the fuck? So then I started to do also, then what happened was, I'm gonna be, I was just, again, being the only male in a female-dominated thing, I hooked up with a couple of the girls. Right. And, um, and I remember the principal came in to me, came in with me, uh, brought me into her office, and she goes, she co- come, brings me in, and she goes, listen to me. She goes, I like you. You're a nice kid. She was like, you got to stop having sex with the teachers, okay? Right. She was like, because they all talk in the cafeteria. Yes. Okay? They all know that you fucked up with all of them. She's like, it was all consensual, no problems there, but it's an issue, okay? You got to stop having sex with the teachers. I said, okay, I'm sorry, all apologetic, whatever. She goes, now. She goes, you're single. I said, yeah. And then she breaks out a picture. She goes, my daughter would be a great fit for you. And she tried to hook me up with her daughter. Now, the problem was... It's the greatest story I've ever I heard. swear to God, she just scolds me. Don't do it. She goes, but here's what it is. The issue with, swear to God, her daughter looked like John Goodman. 
That was the issue. Oh. If her daughter was somewhat Latina or somewhat, I would be in. But I couldn't. I was like, you know, I don't. I was like, I, I, I know. But after what you just told me about, you know, not having sex, I need to find myself and and be in tune. And she was like, go on and one day with my daughter. Yeah. And and, and so we did. Oh, you did. So did. Got a blow job. Yeah. She blew you? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think he's kidding. Uh, uh, um, yeah. So, but but that, I, I always thought that was interesting how she was scolding me for sex but then telling the me to go heard. date her daughter. But then eventually I, I actually didn't have to leave because I was doing comedy simultaneously. I was doing comedy at the same time I was doing physical therapy. So I got on Guy Code, which is a big show for MTV audience for young right, kids right. and a lot of young moms had kids in the school and they were recognizing me and the, oh. the principal was like you can't be doing physical therapy with these types of children and then all and then moonlighting as a comic and talking about the guy code to hiding your boner you can't do that right you right, have to right. choose so i chose comedy and she t was telling me up and down what a stupid decision it was she was like you made two horrible choices in your life one not dating my daughter and two leaving she said both yeah, of I swear those? To God, and 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 and, I, and leaving this job she's like you're not going to make it she's like there's somebody else who does comedy in the board of ed system and they they didn't make it i don't know who the hell it was but she was like it's not going to happen so, so I said, uh, all right, well, I'm just going to take a chance and do it. And then I, and then, and then she was like, you'll regret it. She's like, and by the way, your job will not be here for you when you come crawling that. back. And I was like, well. But isn't it funny how the world changes? Like, what year was that? 2013. 2013. When I was on MTV, people would go, oh my God, you're on MTV. You made it. Right. Like, it was a whole different world. Yeah, now like, they're like, like, this person, if you're on TV once, on any kind of show, people are like you got to leave your job. Like, even though it was a crazy yeah. idea, you it was such a different world. Yeah, now it's like you know the biggest thing you could do is host SNL, and now it's like if you host. Jeez, if he keeps bringing up SNL, it's so annoying. Mm -hmm. I'm trying because I'm trying to put it in the energy. I want at least an audition. It's can you give me an audition? Me. No, this has been bugging me for years. <laughs> not about you, just in general. Your your whole generation. I'm happy I'm not in the you bullseye. Goddamn nerds! You're all like. I can't, I got my Tonight Show spot. And I'm like, why does it matter at this point? Everybody's all exposed all over the place. My Tonight Show, and everybody sits there. It's been happening since I started. And it's been bugging me since then, but now it's worse. Because now it really is irrelevant. And it was like, I'm getting my set together. And everybody sits there, cleans up their whole act, puts a suit that's awkward, goes on, has to cut a minute. Oh, it's all precise until the last second. Cut two minutes out of there. Add four minutes. Yeah. And then... Everybody's up there waiting and getting four applause breaks. Nobody seems funny. Nobody seems like themselves. No one's having fun. And they're like, oh, what good. It's sickening to me. It's been bugging me since I started. And it really bugs me, your generation, when it really doesn't matter. <laughs> but I know it doesn't matter. But that's why I do this. I knew it didn't matter. But I but just want an audition you, for SNL. I just want an audition. The same, it's the same thing with the SNL thing. You've got a bigger career. People in SNL are hoping to get to be able to sell they radio want the homeless city. pimp, not Lauren Michaels. The Radio City <laughs> homeless pimp. That's what I'm saying. They want to sell these big theaters. That their dream. Yeah, but some of them probably won't, most of them won't be able to do that. Okay, yeah, sell tickets. But on the flip side, you know, then they'll do a Verizon commercial or, or a Chase Capital One commercial, and they'll make two million in a, a day a because few it's of them, SNL. A few of them, yeah. I just want really what I'm trying to say here is, and you're not letting me get to it, is I just want to emulate you because I'm <laughs> uh, you. I look up to you, and I just want to do one year on weekend update like you did. <laughs> Oh my God, Chris on weekend. That's all I want. And I, I'm trying what? to take. I'm trying to look for a way to take out they, fucking Colin Jones. They already had a Staten Island white guy doing a weekend update. That's Colin true. Jost. Colin Jost. Oh. I know, and he did it better than anybody. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think Colin Jost and Michael Che are are as good. Uh, are like the some of the best weekend updates ever. He was going to say the best. No, until he realized no, who's no, in the room. No, guess guess who Shut the best up. ones were. <laughs> you and Kevin Nealon, Tina Fey, and Amy Poehler, and Che and Jost. Those are the best ones. No, the best. The be, who? Shane Gillis, you said? No, Amy Poehler and <laughs> Tina Fey and Colin Jost and Michael Che. Oh, I think you said Shane Gillis. I think you said Shane Gillis. Yeah. Shane Go, Ghost Jost sounds like Shane Gillis. He does. Shane Jost. Shane Colin Jost. Jost took down Shane Gillis. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> he gives him anti wasp sentiment. Yes. <laughs> but well, um, yeah, what, what but SNL, uh, all I'm saying is these delusions of the neighborhood ladies in the chairs. SNL, like it's you really are living in 1975. Well, no wonder your favorite band is 1975. There you go. That's I, where you live in your mind. I will tell you, I will tell you this. 
We'll tell you this. I went to SNL for the very first time three weeks ago to see my favorite band, which who never showed up. But I to the <laughs> they after never party. Showed up? Well, they did the show and then they didn't come to the after party. Um, so so I waited. I put on my best outfit and they never showed up. I used to deal with drunk Jasmine telling me I'm a fucking nothing. <laughs> I swear to God. And so and so and so <clears throat> at the after party. At the after party, which yeah, why? I'll tell you why. Because there was one girl passed by, and she was in the middle of talking to you and watching you, and your eyes just went like this. Yeah, yeah. and that I was, was fucked. It. And she just got, she had, she had eight martinis and told me what a nothing I was, and how I'll never do anything <laughs> fucking worth it. And I was like, I got a podcast. And, <laughs> and, and she goes, uh, and, and so, but anyway, what I will say, though, is because a lot of our generation, comics, whatever, mm-hmm. will say stuff about SNL, like, it's kind of similar. Oh, you know, it's not the same as well as blah, blah, blah. To watch the actual making of the show and be there, I was like, I got nothing but respect for these it's guys. It's amazing, yeah. It, it's fucking, even Weekend Update to watch, like, how Absolutely. prepared Jost and Che are, and, they're in the, and then just go out there and nail it. I'm like, to, to come up with an hour and a half of live comedy each week is fascinating. It's amazing. And Lorne Michaels, to his credit... He created the whole thing. He did. And he knew. And he's still there to this day. And he's still there because he knew whatever else goes on, some weeks or some years, it's bad. It's still live. We're going out there. I, I tell you one time, the show is about to start. You know, everybody gets panicky about everything. Like, kind of be sure the edit's correct. He knew. It doesn't matter. One time somebody comes up to him and he's, Sting was hosting that week. And it, we're about to start. It's like 1128. And somebody goes, Lauren, we can't find Sting. He's... He's, right. do, he's the host. He's doing a monologue. Lauren goes, well, I hope we find him because the show works better when the host shows up, I think. <laughs> and it was just so Where was fun. he? Well, I don't know. He was somewhere in the back. But just the fact that he wasn't like, ups- he wasn't like, where is he? He's just yeah. like, well, let's hope he shows up. And that's always how I, he's been, just calm. Yes. Right. Well, and that's, that, a- that's why that show it was a genius idea. Genius idea. And so, do you think it'll end soon or do you think it'll keep going? I wonder, yeah, I do wonder. It'll probably keep going because you know they'll probably it'll probably when he stops doing it, it'll last a couple more years and then probably. Did end. you go to any SNL after parties, or you said hell no? I did back in the day, yeah, when that I was, was there. It was all right, yeah. You just sit sit around, right? Just well, yeah. Shit. I mean, I think the after parties were like in the seventies were the crazy ones, you know. I went to the SNL after party and then I got a three week flu, which I still have remnants of. I know. I can hear it in your voice. You have COVID. Well, you're very much. You have Lauren Mike. <laughs> You have Lauren Michaels' energy because when I had to cancel the podcast, not once but twice, you said, "Go with the flow." You said, "Life is worth. Life is meant to live." Go sure, live. especially because I don't want to get the last time you gave me COVID. I know. Almost pimp with this whole thing. I was waiting. Oh, I think it was really pimp who gave it to all of us. It was actually Venetia. She's the one that had COVID. Didn't tell anybody. No, it was what's his name from uh, Atash. A- Akash. Akash. Akash gave me Akash it. Point yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Akash gave it to me. I would love to know the worst job you ever worked. This podcast. Um, <laughs> The worst, the job I hated the most? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you ask questions like that? Because that's not the point of the show. The, they ask the questions and I do all the chaos. Oh, sorry. I bring the chaos. Ah, you bring me. Yeah, yes, that's The what storm. It yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, well, the most, this is not the worst, but I worked at this, I used to be a bartender at St. Mark's Bar and Grill in uh, Manhattan. And every night, I mean, I'm saying every night, thank God I was drunk the whole time. Every night, there was a giant fight. This is like 1981. Same old Three years before I was born. Was that? Three years before I was born. Three years before I was born. Ten years before they were born. Everybody, the the East Village was wild. Anybody will tell you. Talk about, there was junk. I lived on East 10th and Bay. Every night, there was junkies. This bar was, we come in, and we'd have to take a junkie out that passed out in the bathroom the night before. And just wow. be like, hey. You ever get any dead bodies, or they were always no, alive? No, we didn't have a dead body. But um, but wow! Look at that East Village in the 1980s. In 1981, it was so, it was ju- it looked like that. It was crazy. You'd get the neighborhood portery. Everybody would line would be in order. There was that much garbage like that. That's yeah. truly what it was like. Oh my god! Yeah, no, this, it's like that right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> but I support the DSNY and all they're trying to do to help the city. Yeah, as well, Staten Island. You have to yeah, absolutely they all, they all live there. Lee Zeldin. Lee Zeldin. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. But anyway, <laughs> every night we'd be in there, me and the other bartender, and it would be the, a, full, a fight, and we'd be in the fight, too. You'd have to fight your way out. 
because they'd be attacking us sometimes. Because everybody, everybody paid in change. At the end of the night, there was no cash. It was all quarters, oh, dimes. Every drink was bought with change. Uh, everybody was a dirtbag in there. Uh, <laughs> what was the moment was in, great. Your, in your life that you were like, all right, I got to get sober? I'd see that Valencia uh, Hotel, by the way. It's right to ask a deep question. I know. <laughs> no, but see that Valencia Hotel? Yes. That's on St. Mark's and, and 3rd. Is that, what is that I now? woke up one morning with this girl. She was like 18, it was like a half a hooker hotel. And me and her just in this dark room at the Valencia Hotel. And I was like, she was t telling me her whole life story, how she moved from the Midwest, came to New York, became a hooker, but she liked me. We weren't, you know, I wasn't, I don't know how I met her, but anyway, it was just, it was, I was like, I, know, I, I know how you met her. No, you I gave her a fistful of change the night before. before. Because there was <laughs> such a, like people would be, like everybody had an illegal job. Got it. When you walked to the same So room. the Valencia Hotel now, I don't, I don't even know where that would be. It's, it's probably like a vintage clothing shop. No. Right on Third Avenue, right? It's got to be right there on Saint Saint Mark's. So, so, so you, so, so you see something Saint like Mark's that, hotel. and does it take you back to like? Yes. Do you just think of ne bad stuff, or you think of all the good no, stuff? No, I don't think of the good stuff. You don't remember the bad stuff. You just think of the you good. Think stuff. of the good stuff. But really, that New York was filthy. It was crazy. Look at the train. Look at look that at lady that's on the Meryl train. Streep. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. The trains were crazy. Oh, look at all the graffiti and all that stuff. Yes. So we don't have that now. No. We got maybe some homeless shit smeared on the wild. wall, but that's it. Yeah. So what? There's Chaz Palminteri. So um. So what was the moment that you got sober? Um. With, there's a lot of recovering people that listen to the pod. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was a combination of really just. Do you remember the moment? No, there was no moment. It was just sort of like a combination of waking up and just seeing the. Uh, I had like three desk appearance tickets. I got thrown out. Everybody was disgusted. You know, I couldn't live with any of my friends. I'm just looking at these three desk appearance tickets for separate little incidences in, that I had to go to court for. And I'm just like, I couldn't figure out any of this. And I was like, what am I doing? And I looked in the mirror and I saw a, like a Bowery guy in his 40s. I was 24 or something. And I saw myself living in one of those single room SROs. Right. And I just saw, and I was like, that's who I'm going to be. Like I saw the future. Wow. It was like... I never had those moments where I was like, that's me, that's going to be me, because I was so hungover and I looked so old anyway for my age. Right. That I was like, oh, that's me. And I was like, I got to try to do something. And then it was just like a switch turned off. You're like uh, on the path to sobriety. Well, not really, but it was, but that was a, that was a moment. That was a moment. It's similar to- I don't to know why you have to try to break it into that. I said it's a moment. And you're like, <laughs> okay, and that was it. Well, what I do just, you want a fucking happy Because I just wanted to- <laughs> Write a sitcom? I- I just wanted to compare your journey to my journey into intermittent fasting and how there's similarities. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, you really are keeping up with the intermittent. Yes, I am. I want to eat those fucking cookies, but I can't yet because my well, timer hasn't went what off. What time did you eat? Eight o'clock? No, we're going to... Oh, 10, 15. I actually could have one if I want to, but I'm going to I'm going to exhibit what we call restraint. How much... You, how much <laughs> is that the big word in intermittent fasting? <laughs> restraint. <laughs> <laughs> how long... How much weight have you lost on intermittent fasting? Uh... Oh, uh, let's see. Realistically, 35 no, pounds. No, imagine. What's that? 35 pounds. Really? Yeah. Wow. Do you not see a difference? What's that? Do you see a difference? I do see a difference, but he's wearing the baggy sh thing to uh, keep it, you know. I think he's planning on a summer surprise where he shows off the six-pack. No, that's the thing I can't get. The summer surprise. That was me. This was the day, the Fat Howard Stern episode. But I don't look that much fatter there than I do here. Where are you? No, no, no. On the right. No, because you're wearing a big hoodie, yeah. Yeah, so that's... No, 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 the one, was so skinny. To, to the right. That, that, that was the day. Episode 61 in Las Vegas. When I got on the scale, I was 253 pounds. No, you look way different, dude. Yeah, and, like and Jasmine was... Oh, there, that's you me. with that hair? Yeah. Oh. I, we named the episode Fat Howard Stern. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Um, now, my favorite piece of advice Colin gives about quitting smoking is that if you just find some way to fit, fit like, fill 15, 20 minutes, it'll go away. The, right. The urge. Yeah. It's a lot of these things are boredom too. Right. Eating. Everybody's like, I'm eating because I want to fulfill. All that's true, but it's also you get bored sometimes. Right. And you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to eat to keep, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think that's, I think that's, that's anything. It's just, it's all temporary moments, temporary lapses of judgment. If you can well, just like, get them under control. Well, same thing. Well, like I remember one time I wanted to smoke and I said, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Am I boring you? No. <laughs> No, I I want I got a new. I, Let me uh, ask you something. It's bad enough he get missed he miss you do misgendering. How about when you misdate my show? What is that called? That, yeah. Uh, Sorry. And then 
Imagine a host that says, the show's down, we're not doing it, when it's up. And then, in the middle of another story, when you're trying to, his fucking topic, he brought up, and he goes like this. <laughs> and looks at I his watch. I just want to make sure that we're, you it's know. Insane. And you know what's insane is, I just saw the time when I hit my phone, so I'm yeah, a psychopath. Why don't you, just, you have something over there. It's probably up there on the fucking monitor. No, I, I can't. It's blocked by homeless pimps pop-ups because he watches too much porn on the company computer. <laughs> sorry. 1019, even I can see it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> a, it was a good year, 1019. I think that's the year that, uh, oh. yes, 1019, that William the Conqueror was getting big back then. He was probably born. <laughs> yes, he was, he was getting big. It was the just about to start the Norman invasion. <laughs> the oh. Mark Norman invasion. There it is. The Mark Norman and Sam Marlin invasion. Hey, now, you ready that, for this? Wait, hey, you ready for this? Tell me what you would have done. I had a whole thing planned in Australia, and then guess what? The same dates, yeah. Normand in the same city. So I canceled my Australian, so I'm not going when Norman's there. Good. Fuck them. It would have yeah. been good content, though. It would have been great content. Who the hell wants to do that, though? You, I, I got to go to Australia and do the shows and then fucking film myself holding a koala bear. We get it. Everybody right. holds the same picture with the fucking stupid koala bear. I'm not doing any. I'll do a podcast with a koala bear before I do a picture on one. Like the, like uh, Bobby Pets? Exactly. <laughs> you probably R. kill a koala bear. Uh, you yeah. feed him cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you probably put the koala bear on intermittent fasting and go, this is healthy for the thing. Yeah. He dies of starvation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Koalas have to eat every five seconds. Everybody knows they do. No, they sleep 22 hours a day. Oh, they do? are like one of my kids. They are intermittent fasting. They are. Man. Yeah, that, that's all they do. That's how they keep it. And then they eat, Um, they have chlamydia. They, 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 what? I swear to God, koala bears have. How does he know that? Well, takes that's one really to know interesting. one. I'm Chrissy the koala bear. <laughs> And, uh, and, <laughs> and, so, and so, and then they eat, um, they eat eucalyptus, uh, all day. Yeah. Out, but you said they were sleeping for 22 hours. What's all day mean? Two hours a day? Uh, yeah, two hours a day. They, they're fucking ferocious little fucks too. Are they? Yeah. They'll, they'll scratch the shit out of you. They'll and attack they, you. Is that why you don't go to Australia? No, no, I wanted to go to Australia because I thought it was a good business move until I realized it's going to take me three weeks to get there and I'll make, le I'll make more money in fucking Florida. Yeah. No, so, and, but, and also because I saw the, I went, really, you want to know the truth? When I said to Jazz, even though I'm taking her to Sicily, when I said, hey, Jazz, uh, after Sicily, which is a trip of a lifetime, three weeks later, I have to go to Australia. And she goes, what do you mean you have to go to Australia? I said, yeah. I got to go to Australia. I got shows out there. She goes, you're going to go to the other side of the world without us? And I was like, no, but I'm taking you to Sicily. She was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Australia. She was like, you know what? Have fun. Go to Australia alone. And she went, have fun. Have fun. And then so I started I start to go like this. I started, I started <laughs> was this, to think. Was this the Saturday Night Live party? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no. And you know, you know why I fucked up? You know why, why I fucked up? It's because I didn't tell her about Australia. She saw it on Instagram. <gasps> I just had a post. Me as Chris Helmsworth. Chrissy Australia. Chrissy Kangaroo coming around. And then she goes, uh, she goes, is this a, she goes, oh, I didn't know you were going to. And then oh, she goes, I, she texted me. I didn't know you were going to Caps Lock Australia. And I said, yeah. And then, no. You said, I, said, I said, yeah, it's right after we're going to Sicily, Caps yeah. Lock. And, uh, and then I could just feel the energy where she yeah. was just like, okay, go to the other side of the world without us. Right. Instead you of gotta being do like, it. I got yeah. to bring the fan. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself in a great position to maybe move the shows to this summer where I'm going to take me, Jazz, and three children on a 20-hour flight across the oceans. And no more first class. No, that's out the fucking window, my friend. Now I'm sitting in coach with babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that might be better for the... That's better for the comics one. I think we always got to go through a little bit of better suffering. For Absolutely. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Because the audience sits in coach with babies. Yeah, so that's... in fucking first class. Yeah, so... It, well, yeah, well, I'm going to talk to them about, ooh, we'll look at the extra yeah. leg room on, on Qantas and how I had, we... I had an argument with Jim Jeffries on the flights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New virtual reality death simulator lets you find out what happens when you die. Do you just want to... What? Well, you almost found out. You almost had a heart attack. You almost found out the real way. Exactly. But you fucking survived. Dr. You're Lucas. A survivor. If you could survive the Valencia Hotel, you could survive a fucking heart attack in an Equinox. No problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're right. It's true. Colin, so, do you believe in ghosts? Oh, yeah. Good question. I do believe do in Do you that. have a ghost story? No. No experiences? Then why do you believe? I don't know. I just always love the idea of ghosts. Me too. I've had some weird experiences. Have you had weird ones? Yeah, but I, I don't know if I'm high or not, so. He almost saw somebody commit suicide in his building last this week. This lady was- A ghost? On, no, a, a real person sitting on the fucking edge of their building. Where do you live? What, what neighborhood? I live in Wall Street. Oh, down by me. Wall yeah, Street. Yeah. That's a haunted area. Oh, for sure. Oh, also, for sure. big, big stomping grounds for the colonial Dutch. 
That's right. Shout out Russell Shorto. Go see Colin's show, Small Talk. <laughs> Go, hey, Russell, you don't have to see the show. Just Small Talk with those AI at the yeah. self-checkout in yeah. Amsterdam. But what happened with the ghost? No, this was a real lady on the balcony about to jump. She said she was sitting there with, with her legs, and then she climbed back up onto her patio. Yeah. He called... 911. The doorman told him to go find the building. It's not their problem. And I went to the for, building and then they were trying. It was a You mess. called 911. You should have been filming it for the podcast. <laughs> exactly. That's what I said. I said, that's when you get me over you there. You should have her as a guest. You should have her as a guest. That'd be a good guest. I did film it. Actually. And say, what made you turn back? You did film it? Yeah. I couldn't, you know. Yeah. What are you going to do? We should, uh, you should have her on. Uh, we would have her on. Hey, have guess what? We do. Intervention. We do have her on at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. If you want to see an interview with a suicidal maniac, it's $5 a month. A, a suicidal maniac. Who the fuck's <laughs> calling me? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Here we go. This, this, this is footage from uh, Pimp's apartment. Wow. Be careful. You won't get sued. Wait a Why minute. Why would he get sued? How That's Wall Street. I don't know. Wall Street. Wait a minute. How come I don't recognize her? Okay. Did you see her sitting up there? Took me a second. Look at the top. Look, you see her? Yeah. Oh my God! Ah, oh, she's not coming to us. She's having a nice afternoon. Look, at first of all, <laughs> she'd be the type of person she jumps to commit suicide and then lands on the balcony below into fucking paraplegic for oh, all life. Then she can come on the podcast. That's the worst nightmare. Yeah. Wow, she really is sitting there. Yeah, she don't now, give a damn. I, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, did you? Did you have any life lessons after your uh, near death experience with the heart attack? Um. Well, when I lived on, I used to live on the thirty sixth floor. I used to climb on outside my balcony. Oh, cool. Just to be like crazy, you know. So what do you mean? Scare you my would friends. do shit like that. Yeah, I'd scare my friends and climb on the other side of the balcony. Really? Was yeah. that when you were on? When not? Were you sober doing that? Yeah. Because you wanted like what? Like an adrenaline rush? No, I was just trying to bust balls to my friends. I guess. Oh wow! You you uh, you you were doing fucking you were doing TikToks forty years before yes. they came out. Well, it was like two thousand ten. Yeah. Well, 2010, what? you were climbing outside your balcony. Yeah, I lived on thirty six floor and be like, uh, climb out there. My friends like, get in. What? You were like know. in your late 40s. I don't know. Yeah. What the hell were you doing? That's I don't great. know what I was thinking. Did you care if you fell? I mean, I did, uh, but I mean, I liked, I did like the thrill of the heights, you know. They say most people who commit suicide that it's just a, going back to your point about smoking, it's just a bad five seconds they had and almost all of them regret it. What? How would they know? Would because, they interview them? Well, yes, because they did this the documentary, grave? The Bridge. It's called The Bridge, where they have people jump off the Golden I, Gate I've Bridge and that, none yeah. of them survive. But one guy did, and he said, as soon as my... He, was the, he said, I was as depressed as you could be. I was thinking about suicide. He said, every day he was thinking about suicide from the time he was 15 to the time he attempted it, I think, at, at 35-ish. Right. He said, so every day I was like, I got to find a way to kill myself. He said, as soon as my feet left the platform of the bridge, I instantly regretted it, and I was like, I don't want to do this. But he you, said, so I think that they all feel that way. But, Exactly. That's your evidence that this guy, this suicidal maniac, speculates that everybody else felt the same way he did. It's, <laughs> it's good news. evidence. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> Why do you keep bringing up the eggplant? The against uh, fuck Mary kill. Oh, fuck Mary kill. Right. Oh. oh, fuck Mary kill. Here we go. Or we call it FMK. So here we go. So who's the first one that we play? The Wait. How how long are we in? Uh, hour six. We're in hour six. All right. So we're gonna. We're going to do play Fuck, Mary Kill with Colin, and the rest of this is at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. The next 10 minutes of this podcast, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, then we're going to have breakfast. So go go over there and go see Small Talk with Colin Quinn. Yeah. What's the theater? The Greenwich Theater. The Greenwich Theater, and guess Greenwich what? House no masks. Theater. What? Greenwich House Theater. Greenwich, Greenwich House, House Theater. Theater. Thanks, Billy. That's, that's Billy. Greenwich House. That's Billy Cockmouth. Who people show up at the Greenwich Theater like a bunch of idiots? Greenwich House. Greenwich House Theater. Go see it. Small talk. <laughs> Go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy to have Colin answer some questions at you, the fans, are asking him, so we're going to have Whoa. fun. Go see it. And, of course, ChristyComedy.com. You know you know where my shows are. I'll tell you where they're not, Australia, but they're coming in the summer because I'm not competing with Mark Norman. All right. Here we go. Yeah, here it is. All right, here we go. Fuck, Mary kill. We got Austin Powers, Crocodile Dundee, Patrice O'Neill. Oh, I guess uh, fuck Austin Powers because, you know, he's the most feminine of the three. And you're going to take him to the Valencia? And then take Valencia. <laughs> Patrice, marry because you didn't get a nice conversation with him for a long time. Yeah. And kill Paul because he didn't do my version of Crocodile Dundee 2. Yeah, kill him. Which is, yeah, dude, dude, that story is hilarious where you rewrote Crocodile Dundee 2. I rewrote the whole script. And when nobody asked you to do it. No, I had one line. <laughs> I had one line. I was the person that if they showed up on any movie set, you go, that's the biggest asshole. I'm rid of them. Rewrote the whole movie. 
Nobody asked you to do it, and then nobody took I your notes. I rewrote it with me as the co-star of the movie. Oh, my God. By the way, I looked it up on IMDb. It says Man on Street, Colin Quinn. Yeah. You're not even a character. He's also no. in Three Men and a Baby. He's oh in the first God. scene of that, I which am. is great. Wearing my friend's Holy Cross, speaking of the Queens. Uh, I'm school. an alum. I'm an alum. I'm wearing a Holy, a Holy Cross in Queens? Yeah. yeah. I'm Queens. Uh, well, go look at uh, uh, Three Men and a Baby. I'm wearing a Holy Cross t-shirt. Oh, hell yeah. It's my friend's shirt. And I and Crooked Lines. <laughs> That's right. Billy Hayes off the camera, Crooked Lines. What's That's Crooked right. Lines? That's the Harry O'Reilly movie we made in Brooklyn. How come I'm not in any movies with you guys? <laughs> this is a long time. You're in the you, next one. You were five years old. You're in the next one. I am in the next How one. How long have we tried to get that movie made? Why don't you cough up so why don't you get some of your connections to put up the big money? That's we'll my call with Tom Segura about today. Good. Yeah. Tell him we need six point six million. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's perfect for you. It was written with you, even the characters, an ex-basketball star, all that yeah. stuff. Well, what the fuck? Why don't you call Sandler? I don't know. He's, you know, I call these guys, but it just gets lost in the mist somehow, you know? Have Sam Morrill call him. He's a big Sam Morrill fan, Adam Sandler. <laughs> you think I'm going to have Sam Morrill call Adam Sandler for me? <laughs> That's where I draw the line. Uh, hey, Adam Sandler mentioned you in the Mark Twain uh, Award. I know, I know. What did you think of that? Because I feel like you're not a guy that likes that. No, I think it's crazy. These awards are stupid. Yeah, what, his speech was nice. Everybody else was just phoned in. Yeah, well, Jim Norton mentioned me in his Montreal just for laughs keynote address. So fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair enough. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's here's fan here's questions from fans. I only, can't believe homeless went to Holy Cross. I know, fucking ahead. holy. And he graduated. Um, <laughs> all right, so here we go. This is from Richie. You ever G. play against Nazareth? They don't fuck around. What's that? But no, that school ahead. closed down. Uh, I think Jeff Van Gundy went there. Um, so <laughs> so this is from Richie G at patreoncom slash Christy Comedy. Only way to get involved in the show, Colin. When you really think about it, would you say socialism is just another form of capitalism, which is just communism rolled up into classic Marxist ideology, and basically we're all Nazis? What are you trying to mock my one man shows? <laughs> yeah, this is where. Yeah, this he, he, like he, he was in the front row of small talk. Was that exactly? Yeah. He's what just, do you think of that? I mean, it's you know, there's a lot to wrap your head around. Let's face it. Right. I mean, you know, was communism roll up. I mean. I, no, I think he's just being ironic. Why would you pick that question? Okay. It's, he's trying to be funny. <laughs> All right, so here's Don't another you question. Get it? Well, here's another question from Richie G. Do you feel like your mentorship with Chris set the stage for where he is today? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Me and actually last year, me and Billy sat down and I said, Chris, where you're hot right now. I'm going to sell you all my material. I think it was for a million dollars on the Staten Island house. And then the house. Which you're which, done with anyway. Which I'm done with anyway. There's no, no community. There's no old ladies. I said, you know how much material I have? I have hours that is unused, unseen by the naked eye. <laughs> and he thought about it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not a mentorship at this point. Yeah. It's really just a sale. I couldn't. I would have bought it. It's a, a sales job. Yeah, I would have bought it, but I instead I had to take my entire family to Australia, so I couldn't afford your fucking material. I could write some Australian jokes for you. I wrote, we wrote Crocodile Dundee too. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about Australia. <laughs> this is from Lisa Pizza. Ooh. What do you say to young people who are realizing the world isn't what they thought and think that the world is coming to an end with an inevitable world reset? What do you say about that with all your life experience? Well, a reset is not the end. I mean, you know what I mean? There's two things. It's either an end or a reset. A reset could be good. Shake off some people. You know what I mean? If, if it ends with like, if it, if it is a reset, a reset is a reboot. That's positive for your computer. If it's coming to an end, different story. What do I say to those people? I say, look, I mean, it is, it's really kind of a sad thing. But, um, you know, I'd say this has got to be another world somewhere, right? What are we going to do? Just What do you say to me? <laughs> what? That, and what do you say to me opening up a podcast studio right next to a construction site? All year is drilling. I know. The street, we were talking about that here. And we got no sound. We don't have any sound stuff. We're you know, idiots. You know That's what I say to these people? I say it's good because get, I'm sick and tired of everything's too antiseptic. You want the old New York in the 70s? That's what it sounded yeah. like. Yeah, I should fucking, I sh you know what? If I really want this set to be old New York, I should get prostitutes and Johns in here. Oh. Get well, hookers in here. Definitely should get rid of that stupid plant. Although in the 70s. Benetia is dying inside because that's her plant. <laughs> Sorry, Benetia. But I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I have no taste. But. <laughs> 
I'm, she, I guarantee she'd rather have a plant insulted than you trying to be funny putting Sal Volcano cut out in the middle of a plant. Yes. She doesn't like that. I thought it was a good I bit. Oh, <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I thought it was a good bit. <laughs> ah. Well, are you doing the show tonight, Small Talk? Yep. Every night you do it. Yeah, except Mondays. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Yeah, Casey, the Mondays. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, so let me ask you a question do you feel i always thought about this with people who are on broadway and in, in some way in some ways it it stand up is very different even though you know what you're doing is a, is a one-man show it's all comedy based but in some ways i'm wondering do you think what you're doing night after night because you have the same lines the same direction they're not the same, the same every night what do you mean i saw I'm the show three times every night you saw the show once. Come see it again. It's all. It's a lot of different stuff. Yeah, but oh, so you aren't. So it is a stand-up hour. Yeah, I change every night. But but isn't there stage direction and places you have to be? Ah, and to a marks degree, you have nah, to really. hit. Nah, when you're coming through the side door, I'm like, oh, you know, we halfway do it. I like yeah. that. By the way, when you came through the side How about door, that set. How cool is oh, that? I set? love that. I, set. Love yeah, nice. it's like, I saw the show. I loved it. Thanks. She bought it. tickets. I bought it. Oh, my I, God. I liked all the Greek references. No freebies. Oh, out. that's right. She's Greek, of course. I yeah. Half the set's in Greek. But but let me ask, do you think, are there nights? Cause I was, egg. Are there nights where you're like in the dressing room like, I don't want to do this. I don't know how the hell I'm going to get through this hour. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do it. Um, if I don't have new stuff, that would happen. But, but, but I always have new stuff now because of that exact reason. So you're always adding. So every night you're adding, adding a new for bit. that exact reason. But I, I thought it was a one man show. It's got to be the same way every time. It's like a play. I, I, you mean like the same way you asked me that exact question? I said no to it three <laughs> minutes ago. You're in a goddamn play right now. You're not even listening to I me. I know. I told you I had to change every night. And then you you try to badger me. <laughs> like like fucking trying to get me to admit something that doesn't exist. <laughs> no of these innocent people uh, admit to murders they didn't commit. People like you. I want to open you. I want to open for you at the show. You should be. You should be a cop. You work with the cannibal cop in your body. <laughs> My favorite part when I saw Colin's show was in the middle. He threw out a new uh, chunk about a woman having a heart attack at the show. And it, oh yeah, and it got nothing, and you're like, "Yep, last time I ever say that out loud." And that was the last time. <laughs> it was great. Some lady had a heart attack. You know, I'm gonna bring that back because some lady had a heart. <laughs> some lady had a heart attack, and this girl emailed me or DM me or something. Said, "How the fuck she? Maybe she left a note. I can't remember, but she um, she said I was outside your show." And I felt bad. It was an old lady, old bitty, trying to talk to me and my friend. And in the spirit of the show, I said, oh, "I talked back to her," and. We talked to her, we realized she can't talk, she's having a heart attack. So we called an ambulance, they came and took In her. In the middle of the show they, performance? No, no, after the show. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> I'm doing it as a bit now. <laughs> That's a good bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what the point is, because of the show, right after the show, they saved the lady's life. Oh, what beautiful. Save well, the life. at least the ambulance. I don't know if she would die. She might have died in the ambulance. <laughs> she might have been a Maybe she was on that new Netflix show, New York City 911, about the New York City emergency room. Sorry, Dr. Lukash. Show. Yeah, I know. Lukash said, Lukash goes, yeah, I know those doctors are all hacks. <laughs> <laughs> he said doctors can be hacks. Of course they can. Yes, he said these fucking hacks. Every job is hacks. Every job has a hack. Plenty of them. I know. All right. Um, I have a question. We were talking a lot about New York and stuff. I'm curious that if you had to live somewhere else in the country, I read your book, Overstated. I'm curious if you would live anywhere in those states, any other state. Athens. Athens? Where? Which, <laughs> Greece. Where? Not Athens, New York. Oh, Athens, I meant in America. Georgia. Sorry. In America? Yeah. You know what? Here's what I've realized about America. I've done nothing but love this country my whole life, and it's given me sort of like friend zone vibes, and I'm sick and tired of it. <laughs> That's how I feel about America. I've gone out of my way for 30-something years, really embarrassingly like thirsty, pushing myself on this country, and they're like, eh, we like you okay. We like all these other people better. It's like, guess what? Enough. I'm done. So yeah, New York will be lucky if I don't even leave here. I'll leave the whole country. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you go? Doesn't matter. It's true. Even when we went to Ireland, we went to Ireland one time. That was great. Yeah, that was great. And we went with Mark Norman. You can see all over Australia doing the dates I was supposed to do. <laughs> Mark Norman, <laughs> Sam Morrill, him, me, Rachel, Rachel Feinstein, Pete, and, um, and her husband, Pete. Pete. Who else Pete was the there? fireman. Nate, oh. Nate Bogazzi. Who gave, the who gave Colin notes. Thank God <laughs> Nate Bogazzi has the good taste to use some of the finest people in this business. <laughs> <laughs> 
That was fun, Ireland. I love going to I, I experienced Ireland, but I only saw three blocks of it. It was three blocks. We would go to the same diner in Dublin. Same diner every day. Colin would buy me breakfast, tell me what I'm doing wrong. We would eat, drink, have a great time. Then we'd walk around the same three, four blocks, go back to the hotel, take naps, do the shows, get notes from Nate Bargazzi. That was, that's, <laughs> that's what it was. I still don't remember Nate giving me notes, but. It, well, he gave them to me to give to you, and I didn't give them to you. Uh, what is it? <laughs> he probably gave you the fucking key to, the, to his success, and I didn't you, tell you. Boy, that goddamn, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that Nate, who knew he'd blow, talk about a, a blowing up in like a really quiet way. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like, it's beautiful. It's the best way to do it. He's doing arenas now. It's the best way to do it, the way Nate's doing it. See, you hear that? Yeah. Fucking almost like, he's doing arenas now. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you could see, <laughs> you could see me at the Crane Theater with Joe DeRosa in New York oh, City. <laughs> I don't I like that Joe is trying to keep, trying to take over my mantle as New York. He's fucking. trying to be next to you. Next thing you know, he'll be with hookers in the Valencia. <laughs> and I guarantee he's selling all these, like, he's throwing in some references, like, Lou Reed or whatever. He doesn't even know the performing garage is on his block. It's Billy. I'm walking up and going, Billy, the performing garage. That's where Willem Dafoe used to be. I don't know if it was him, but somebody like him. Laurie Anderson, they used to put, Karen Finley was the one that put, used to put the yams up her, you know. And uh, I was throwing out all the 80s performance oh. art references. Joe DeRosa doesn't know about shit like that. I didn't know it was a, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know about shit like that, the performing Well, you garage. didn't know, but I'm just saying you're not... Pretending Mr. 80s hipster. Oh, right, right, yeah. I'm not, you know right. Joe. Right, I know. He's going to be Mr. Downtown. Right. He's going to come out to like a Ramon song or a New York Dolls song. Right. I can see it all now. Yeah. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. I'm not going to stand for it. All right. I have one more question. Yeah, the, uh, I got to pee. I'd love to know your thoughts on the new era of clip comedy and if it hurts comedy's future. And if also what he really wants to know is can we run a clips page for you called Colin Quinn's Clips? Colin's Clips. Colin's Clips. Colin Quinn. We'll take care of it. Colin Quinn Clips. I mean, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's so Clips weird. Clips Quinn. I don't know. I mean, I don't know anything about the state of, like, the business part of anything. But when I watch it, it's so weird. Like, even I, who lo- I was interested in comedy, if somebody's thing is more than, like, a minute and a half, I'm like, this is too long. Get to it. Like, even I feel that way. I can right. imagine how some 18-year-old kid feels. Right. Yeah. But I mean, but yeah. don't, you, you, you don't want us to put out, uh, you don't, what if we asked you, said, Colin, we want you to do a bunch of crowd work clips. Would you do it? What do you mean? For do you, you do crowd work? Do you hate crowd work? No, I like crowd work. I do it in the show. Let's clip it. Let, we'll, we'll, we'll film and we'll do clips. We'll put it out. Colin's clips. Yeah, but crowd work, now that's crowd work, over. Crowd work, Colin. That's oversaturated, too. Everything gets oversaturated. I'm going to do a special like that one kid that did the special that Mike Feeney's been showing around. Mike Feeney, yeah. He's got your hair cut and he's doing comedy. Now yes, listen. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mike Feeney, you know, he, it's not him, but there's a guy that did a fake special. Did you guys see that? Oh, yeah. What, with, like, fake audience reaction? It was canned laughter in a green screen. But it looks like he's doing it in a live show. And you think that's the way to go. That's the future. <laughs> that's the future. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I love it. <laughs> no, no. I'm kidding, of course. I love it. Well, Isn't thank, that crazy, Thank though? God Small Talk's still going on. Oh, my God. Don't try to over-promote it now because you screwed it up at the beginning. Well, we're on the Patreon now. so the- Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So hey, the Patreon, Patreon people fans. haven't heard. Yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> These people, it's a whole nother level of respect. Yes. These are the real fans. The Puerto Ricans, as we call them, the Newports. Oh, Newports. Puerto Ricans smoke Newports. Yeah. So people will be like, I'll wear a shirt that says, I love Newports. And they'll be like, oh, I vacation in Newports. I'm like, oh, okay. I oh, I like on this. Fourth Avenue and Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> well, Puerto Ricans don't live there anymore, right? They all moved to like uh, Monroe and... You well, know, no, the Puerto Ricans still on 4th Avenue. Chester, New York. That, but you still have a lot of Puerto Ricans on 4th Avenue and 5th Avenue. And then it gets yeah. Chinese. Yeah. What's happened? What's going on? Billy Hayes and Pimp, there's Uh-oh, commotion. Oh, something. There's an emergency happening. There's an emergency. We got to go. I love you guys. We're going to go have breakfast. Go see Colin Quinn, Small Talk. Thank you guys for all the continued support here at the Chrissy Chaos Show. And uh, love you, Colin. Love you, did too, Did you enjoy Chrissy. this? Yeah, I really did. Let's go I to the did. Valencia. Thank you. Was, was, did it turn out to be better than Sam and Mark's show? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, that's a no. 